Welcome back to our channel and today's topic is all about EDSA Revolution, the Epifanio de los Santos Avenue. EDSA Revolution and the Philippine Revolution of 1986, also known as the People Power Revolution, was a series of popular demonstrations in the Philippines that began in 1983 and culminated in 1986. The method used amounted to sustained campaign of civil resistance against regime violence and electoral fraud. This case of nonviolent revolution led to the departure of President Ferdinand Marcos and the restoration of the country's democracy. It is also referred as Yellow Revolution due to the presence of yellow ribbons during demonstrations and arrival of the assassinated Benigno Aquino Jr. The majority of demonstration took place on a long stretch of Epifanio de los Santos Avenue, more commonly known by its acronym EDSA, in Metropolitan Manila from February 22 to 25 in 1986 and involve over 2 million Filipino civilians as well as several political, military, and including religious groups led by Cardinal Jaime Sin and the Archbishop of Manila. The protests, fueled by the resistance of opposition from years of corrupt governance by Marcos, culminated with the departure of the dictator from Malacanang Palace to the United States of Hawaii. Curacao Aquino was proclaimed as the legitimate president of the Philippines after the revolution. The background and history, Ferdinand Marcos was elected president in 1965. Ferdinand Marcos was elected president in 1965, defeating incumbent Justado Macapagal by a very slim margin. During this time, Marcos was very active in initiation of public works, project, and intensification of tax collections. Marcos and his government claimed that they built more roads than all his predecessors combined and more schools than any previous administration amidst charges of vote buying and fraudulent election. Marcos was re elected in 1969, this time defeating Serge Orsmenia Jr. However, was uh, marred by allegation of widespread graft and corruption. The increasing disparity of wealth between the very wealthy and the very poor, which made up the majority of the country's population, led to the, to the rise of the crime and civil unrest around the country. These factors, including the formation of the New People's Army and Armed Revolt that called for the redistribution of wealth and land reform in the Philippines, and a bloody Muslim separatist movement in the southern island of Mindanao led by Moro National Liberation Front contributed to the rapid rise of civil discontent and unrest in the Philippines. The Declaration of Marcelo Marcos was barred from running for a third term as a president in 1973. So on September 23, 1972, by virtue of Presidential Proclamation 1081, he declared martial law citing rising civil disobedience as justification. Through this decree, Marcos seized emergency powers giving him full control of the Philippine military and the authority to suppress the freedom of speech, the freedom of press, and many other civil liberties. Marcos also dissolved the Philippine Congress and shut down media establishment critical of the Marcos government. Marcos also ordered the immediate arrest of his political opponents and critics. The new constitution by Marcos. Marcos would also abolish the Philippine 1935 constitution and replace it with a parliamentary style government, the Batasang Pambansa, along with new constitution written by him, with practically all of his political opponents arrested and exiled. Marcos preemptive declaration of the martial law in 1972 and the ratification of his new constitution 
through political coercion enabled him to effectively legitimize his government and hold on to power for another 14 years beyond his first two terms as president at a period when the Cold War was still political reality. Marcos' dictatorship ensured the political support of the United States by Marcos' promise to stamp out communism in the Philippines and by assuring the United States of its continued use of military and naval base in the Philippines. Regime in the Philippines throughout his presidency, Ferdinand Marcos, had set up a regime in the Philippines that would give him ultimate power over the military and national treasury, as well as set up personality cult following his declaration of martial law. On September 21, 1972, Marcos immediately began to embezzle money from the government in order to mil military to kill any political competition against him. As a result, the Philippine economy began to tumble greatly and the nation lost its competitive edge in Southeast Asia. The jurisdiction of President Marcos. Marcos ordered many stores, hotels, schools, Universities and other public places to place his presidential picture prominently and otherwise their facilities were shut down. The media frequently eulogized Marcos through public service, announcements, and news reports. Even billboard advertisement across the country were replaced with his propaganda. Messages on justifying his regime action. Marcos also ordered the shutdown and takeovers of business in the country then put this business either under government control or under the control of his cronies. Plans of Ninoy Aquino in 1983 Ninoy Aquino announced of his plan to return to the Philippines as a challenge to Marcos. Because of the plan of Ninoy, Marcos with the military and police, this illusion junior officer silently conveyed their grievances. This led to the formation of the Reform Armed Forces Movement, or RAM, Soldier of the Filipino People, SFP, and Young Officer Union, U. RAM, which was led graduates of the Philippine Military Academy, Class of 71, Lieutenant Colonel Gringo Hunazan, and Victor Batak, and Lieutenant Colonel Eduardo Capunan, found an ally and mentor in the Defense Minister, Juan Ponce in really. The assassination of Ninoy, despite warnings from the military and of other pro-Marcos groups, Ninoy Aquino was determined to return to the Philippines, ask what he thought of death threats. Ninoy Aquino responded, the Filipino is worth dying for. On August 21, 1983, after a three-year exile in the United States, Aquino was assassinated as he was disembarking from commercial flight at the Manila International Airport, which was later renamed Aquino's Honor. His ass assassination shocked and outraged many Filipinos, most of whom had lost confidence in the Marcos administration. The event led to more suspicious about the government, triggering non-cooperation among Filipinos that eventually led to outright civil disobedience. It also shook the Marcos government, which was by then deteriorating due to the part to Marcos worsening health and ultimately fatal, fatal illness. The cost of Ninoy assassination. The assassination of Ninoy Aquino caused the economy of the country to deteriorate even further, and the government plunged further into debt. By the end of 1983, the country was bankrupt and the economy contracted by 6.8 percent. Commission of Marcos In 1984, Marcos appointed a commission led by his Chief Justice Enrique Fernando to launch an investigation into Aquino's assassination despite the commission's conclusion Cardinal Jaime Sin, the Archbishop of Manila, declined an offer to join the commission and rejected government's views on the assassination. By October, Marcos appointed a second commission to investigate. The commission final report accused the military of staging a conspiracy to assassinate Aquino, dealing another major blow to the already collapsing government. Snap election 
The election were held on February 7, in 1986. The official election canvasser, the Commission on Election, the COMELEC, declared Marcos the winner. The final tally of the COMELEC had Marcos winning with 10,807,197 votes against Aquino's 9,291,000. Issues after the election On the other hand, finally, tally of the National Movement of Free Election Umfrel, an accredited poll watcher had a keen winning with 7 million votes against Marcos for a very slim margin. This electoral exercise was marred by widespread reports of violence and tampering of election results, culminating in the walkout of 29 Kamelik computer technicians to protest the deliberate manipulation of official election return favor to Ferdinand Marcos. The workout, make that the walk out, was considered as one of the early sparks of the People Power Revolution. Catholic Bishop Conference of the Philippines issued a statement of condemning the election. The United States Senate also passed a resolution stating the same condemnation U.S. President Ronald Reagan issued a statement calling the fraud reports as disturbing in response to the protest. Comelli claimed that Marcos with 53% won over Aquino, however, Numfrel countered that the latter won over Marcos with 52% of votes. Proclamation On February 15, Marcos was proclaimed by the Comelli and the Batasang Pamansa as the winner amidst the controversy. All 50 opposition members of the parliament walked out in protest. The Filipino people refused to accept the result. However, asserting that Aquino was the real victor, both winners took their oath of office in two different places. With Aquino gaining greater mass support, Aquino also called for coordinated strikes and mass boycott of the media and businesses owned by the Marcos Cronies. As a result, the Crony banks Corporation and media were hit hard and their shares in the stock market plummeted to the record levels. The first inauguration, Tuesday, February 25, at around 7 a.m., a minor class occurred between the loyal government troops and the reformist snipers stationed atop a government-owned Channel 9 near Channel 4 began shooting at the reformist. Many rebel soldiers surged to station. Corazon Aquino was inaugurated as President of the Philippines in a simple ceremony at Club Filipino in Green Hills, about a kilometer from Camp Krami. She was sworn as a President by Senior Associate Justice Claudio T. Hanke and Laurel as Vice President by Justice Vicente Abad Santos. The Bible on which Aquino swore her oath was held by Aurora Aquino. The mother of Ninoy Aquino attending the ceremonies were Ramos, who was then promoted general in Rayleigh and many politicians. Outside club Filipino, all the way to EDSA, hundreds of people cheered, celebrated. Bayanco, my country, was a popular folk song and an official national anthem of the protest, was sung after Aquino's outtaking. Many people wore yellow and color of Aquino's campaign for presidency. The second inauguration, Marcos conducted the inauguration at Malacanang. Loyalist civilians attended the ceremony shouting Marcos Parin. On the palace balcony, Marcos took his oath as the president of the Philippines, broadcast by IBC 13 and GMA 7, None of the invited foreign dignitaries attended the ceremony for security reasons. The couple finally stepped out of the balcony of the palace in front of 3,000 KBL loyalists who were shouting to Marcos, Capture the snake! First Lady Imelda Marcos sang one more rendition of Dial Sayu. Because of you, the couple's theme song rather tearfully chanting her trademark Tagalog entities. 
Because of you, I attend happiness. I offer you my love. That is the song. By this time, hundreds of people had amassed at the barricades along Minjula, only a hundred meters away from Malacanang. They were prevented from storming the palace by loyal government troops securing the area. The angry demonstrators were pacified by priests who warned them not to be violent. The Marcos departure. Marcos arrived on February 26 when the news of Marcos departure reached the people. Many rejoiced and chanced in the streets over at Mindyola. The demonstrators were finally able to enter Malacanang Palace, long denied to Filipinos in the past decade. Looting by overly angry protesters occurred, but the most, most people wandered inside. Looking at the place where all the decisions that changed the course of Philippine history had been made. 10 Peso Cohen commemorating the People Power Revolution. So, this is a very collectible coin, guys. If happens, you can touch this one or you can have this one, then just keep it. Because this is a very collectible coins now the 10 peso coin of 1986 the presidency of Corazon Aquino in her speech before the United States Congress which she delivered on September 18 1986 seven months after assuming the presidency President Aquino observed that ours must have been the cheapest revolution ever despite the people power revolution however the democratic political system of the Philippines is still fragile and flawed. Patronage politics still hinders the development of democracy and natural resources are now mostly exploited by Western nations. The revolution had an effect on democratization movements in places such as Taiwan and South Korea. Other effects include the restoration of the freedom of the press, adoption of new constitution and the subordination of military to civilian rule. Despite several coup attempts during the Aquino administration. The 1987 Constitution, Bill of Rights, third article titled The Bill of Rights is guaranteed by state, but in most instances is largely ignored by the government and is viewed by foreign sources as coded to ensure tyranny of the majority. The revolution also provided the restoration of democratic institutions after 13 years of authoritarian rule. These institutions have been used for political and social actors to challenge the entrenched political clans and develop Philippine democracy, however. While democracy, as Filipinos knew it, was restored, rampant corruption plagued the government that led to 2000 EDSA revolution which deposed President Joseph Estrada. While the Marcoses fled, the former president died in exile Hawaii. His wife Imelda later won a seat in the House of Representatives, and his son Ferdinand Jr. was elected senator in 2010. The revolution may have had brought uh, changes to the leadership in the country. The power remained concentrated among the small rich elite. The perception of the public about the Marcos regime is changing with some people focusing on its investment, infrastructure and public works rather than the human rights, abuses and claims of lavish personal spending. Criticism, there are political writers, especially those living outside Metro Manila, who associated the People Power Revolution with what term as Imperial Manila, because it was believed that Marcos was toppled from his position without participation of Filipinos living in areas outside capital region. In article published, Philippine Daily Inquirer, Amando Doronila wrote that people power movements have been Imperial Manila phenomenon. Their playing field is EDSA. They have excluded the Provincianos from their movement with their insufferable arrogance and snobbery, ignoring the existence of toiling masses 
and peasants in agrarian Philippines. So, that's it for today folks. Thank you so much and don't forget to answer questions at the end of this video. Ciao! Right class, here are the questions for you to answer about EDSA revolution. Okay, number one is what is the reason of EDSA revolution? Is EDSA revolution peaceful? What does EDSA revolution symbolize? Why is EDSA revolution also referred as a yellow revolution? Why was EDSA called Highway 54 back then? Why was Dr. Rosirizal executed? That's out of our topic question, but anyway, just answer it. When did EDSA revolution start? Who is the longest serving president in the Philippines? What do revolutions do? Why EDSA called EDSA? Is EDSA a C4? That's a term for uh, an expressway. What was the old name of EDSA? Okay, that's all the question folks. And don't forget to subscribe and make a comment on our YouTube channel for your comment will serve as your attendance. Thank you so much. Ciao for now.